Welcome to episode 83 of our Road to Unicum. Today we look at the first of the Tech Tree wheeled vehicles. This is the Tier 6 AMD 178B, the French light tank. And I'm currently on the Tier 7 and grinding that out. We're going to take a look at this tank in a pair of Tier 8 battles. So I'm obviously the bottom tier. First up is Lakeville, and then second will be Live Oaks. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you've heard me talk about the amazing house that's in the northeast corner of G7 for the south spawn. And that location has the magical trifecta of soft cover, which is bushes, right next to adjacent hard cover, in this case a building, and it has a tremendous field of view. Now, I do start the match with high explosive preloaded, but because I know I'm going to have shots on this panther, I switch over to the armor piercing ammo, which has much better shell velocity, it's easier to hit targets from range, and also, you know, the sides of that panther, I'm going to have a better chance of penetrating reliably if I'm using AP. Now, the HE can be a little bit flaky. Notice there I only got a very low damage roll against the side of that uh, Striv S1, which has pretty good ammo from the front, uh, armor from the frontal profile due to the slope and angle of it, but from the sides it's, it's pretty butter. But I only got a very low damage roll. The French wheeled vehicles, these light tanks, tend to have meaningfully better high explosive penetration than is normal. And so a high explosive is much more of an option for using, and especially because their high explosive round in this case also has meaningfully better penetration than your average HE shell for the tier. So this high explosive round has 75 penetration. I have noticed sometimes getting some really trollish damage rolls there, like that 41 on the opposing 178B. 178B is actually, uh, like uh, all the French wheeled vehicles, incredibly squishy in terms of its armor. Now one thing I need to be uh, careful of, notice I'm fully in the bush, right? A lot of players, including me, I used to sit in this bush where the rear half of me would be behind the bush, but if you do that, then when their tanks approach city um, on the north side of that chapel, they'll spot you. So if you don't want to get spotted by their tanks that advance into the city by the church, you actually have to be fully within the bush, which means you need to be doubly careful when you use your gun, because if you get spotted, you need to back up you know, about 10 meters and then turn around the back of the building. So that, you know, increases your exposure. So relative to the other tier six light tanks, the silver ammo penetration is a bit lackluster. And notice, by the way, that light tank had pushed way too far into the city. And later their AMD 178B is going to make the same mistake. This T21 gets spotted. He's actually very exposed where he is, which allows me to fire multiple shots into him. But relative to the other tier 6 lights, uh, this tank's silver AP penetration is actually uh, lower. It's 120, which it's okay. It's just that, you know, from a frontal perspective, you're not necessarily going to get a lot of penetrations, right? Uh, and then the alpha of 110 for the AP is also um, on the low side. That being said, you know, the gun is a joy to fire. Like, there's a lovely shot there for 170 with that high explosive round. With that 75 penetration, you can, within, uh, let's say, reasonably deal you know, large amounts of damage to tanks that are squishy. You know, and that's kind of the name of the game here. You know, if, if you can get a higher DPM in this case and also you know, higher burst damage, it's totally worth it. That being said, you know, I remember talking to Avalon 304, so a friend of mine that I platoon with, and you know, he'd pointed out the, the way that HE works, like that's only three damage there. He had pointed out that when high explosive collisions with a tank, um, the penetration calculation is done against the softest, least armor in the kind of explosion radius. And so that may or may not be true. I don't actually know. Uh, what I do know from practice is that for whatever reason, even tanks that are very thinly armored, like that Striv S1 on its side, or the AMD 178B when I shot him when he was on mid road, that you know I'll get some trollishly low damage rolls where I won't even uh, penetrate sometimes. And I know you can hit things like the barrel of a gun, you know, and cause the high explosive round, round to pre detonate before it reaches the tank. Uh, both of their light tanks, by the way, uh, two of them I should say, both the LTG and one of the AMD 178Bs rushed into city by the church and you know people tend to get carried away with speed you know and like in the case of the amd 178b like why would he rush into the church area and put him in self into like a 1v3 or 1v4 it just makes absolutely no sense now we do need to be careful as we exit here 
because you know, most of their tanks are either going to be sitting behind bushes and hard cover. So if we're going to advance upon them, you know, there are going to be meaningful windows of time where we're going to be exposed. And what happened is that our AC4 and one of our light tanks had pushed along this same road that our Skoda had gone down. The Skoda is about to just eat massive amounts of damage. He's on too high of an approach lane, right? He's out in the open, basically just asking to get farmed, right? And so he just gives up all of his hit points for uh, very little you know, benefit. I think he might have landed a shot or two, but it's not worth throwing away your tank like that, especially this early in a battle where it's still six to six. And looking at the map, it's important to know the depth and locations of your friendly players who will have fire on targets that you light. So in the case of the, of the Progetto, he's moved up the appropriate distance where if I light their Panther, the Centurion, or some of these tanks, the uh, TDs to my northwest, he may have flanking shots on them. And now, you know, that the 45 TP is exiting city, um, same goes for him. Now, the main thing is I'm rushing toward the interior of the late, very specifically because it protects me from their tanks that are to the west and northwest of me. However, you can see I am vulnerable to fire from the Panther, and those first two shots don't penetrate. I think I get pretty unlucky since I was aiming at the lower plate of that Panther, but that last shot didn't, you know, did penetrate the lower plate and finish him off. Now, I need to be careful about that Centurion. If he pokes out right from behind that rock, um, you know, he has a 240 Alpha gun, assuming he's a top gun. There's the potential that he could one shot me, you know, even more so if he switches to high explosive because I am super squishy. So the main thing is, is just to be patient, right? And, you know, I'm not the only one who's spotting now. Like the projector has come up, you know, he's hit this TD, this American tier six medium is overexposing his hull. And then I move back so that that shot from the Centurion misses me. And then the projecto finishes him off. The nice thing, you know, even though I'm vulnerable to some fire while I'm down by the lake, it is the safest way to get close to them and I can always wiggle laterally back and forth to throw off their aim. And you know, in my particular case, I knew if the Centurion came out from behind the rock to take a shot at me, the Progetto would most likely be able to hit him, right? And then in this situation here, like I was expecting to penetrate, I didn't, you know, I can survive that hit. We're really far ahead. And now I'm just going to wait until the 45 TP and the Progetto 46 clean this up. But what, you know, what I was saying earlier about high explosive is that you know, on paper, that 75 millimeter penetration for high explosive, you would think in pretty much every case, you know, if you shoot at a soft squishy target like the, another AMD 178B or the size of that Striv S1 or something squishy like the Cromwell, that you'd end up with a lot of penetrations and it actually doesn't always work out that way. So I'm mentioning this only because you know, that HE round while it's a fantastic tool is not always predictable. And you can see I'm about to run out of my AP ammo here. So I carry a loadout in this tank of you know, 25 silver AP with 20 HE rounds. And that, that's because the HE rounds are super helpful for taking out opposing lights and squishy tank destroyers and RD. But it's very flaky. Like there, you can see I get a full pen through the top of the turret. And then the next shot only does 32 damage. So that's 202 damage across two shots. And if I had AP and just fired AP, I should have done an average of around 220 damage, right? Okay, so let's take a look at Live Oaks. And you know, as you may know, a lot of Unicums prefer to play the railroad side of the map. There are a few different uh, reasons why that is the case, but let me tell you what the problem is with going to City. So first of all, Entering into city, there's a large kill zone where you can get pooped on by Artie, or if you get spotted, their tank destroyers can potentially hit you. The other problem is city takes a while to resolve, typically, right? Because you know there's buildings and hard cover everywhere, and even if you win city, your team has to exit city across a large kill zone. And so you know in that area, you know from that way, even if you win city when you're coming out, you can eat a lot of damage. So a lot of Uticums prefer to come. You know, along the eastern side, and I think for a light tank, it is the most consistent way to play this map. What I'm trying to do is get up to this bush so that I can counter spot any of their early lighter medium tanks that are pushing down along the zero lane. And part of this is also so that, you know, if their tanks ran up to here quickly and they decide to take pot shots at that 45 TP in our poodle, that the second they fire, I'm going to spot them, uh, or better yet, I spot them before they even fire, and that way. You know, tanks know when they're spotted. It'll give our chance for our TDs that were immediately kind of settled in over down by K5 to fire back at them. Now, I do need to be careful that obviously this P43 and their Type 59 know where I am. The Type 59 is in a really tough hold down position for us, right? Mostly vulnerable to already fire, but otherwise not vulnerable. And then 
You notice that before I pulled the trigger on that shot on the P43, I, I kept AP loaded in this case because you know his armor, he's got decent armor friendly. I want to make sure penetrate and deal damage. I didn't actually penetrate, but the P43, if I look at his turret, I can see he's looking at the 45 TP. So because he's doing this, I'm able to get the first shot advantage there. Now the main problem is I'm exposed to fire from their tanks that may be to my northeast, right? In this case, that T-34-85, and Artie immediately fired, right? So the Artie was pre-aiming at the bush. The nice thing is, is that the friendly players on our team, the Poodle and the 45 TP, recognize the same thing that I do, which is they don't have a lot of tanks that are close enough to the sprawling area, right? And so, you know, we're able to go up and over into the ditch and dogpile their P43. Now you need to be careful. Notice I didn't go down into the ditch immediately. And part of the reason why is you don't want to go to a depth where you are overexposed relative to the enemy. And so check this out. This is part of the problem with the wheel vehicles. Like I'm trying to turn and head over towards that Type 59 because our 45 TP and Poodle are 2 v wanting him and I want to help them. But I want to stay down below the ridge so I can mask my approach, not get lit by the T-3045 on my way in, or Artie, you know, you've already seen Artie's already, was already pre-aiming at me once, and you know, Artie just fired at me again, so you know, you got to take a mental note of that, that he's choosing to selectively target me relative to the other, you know, 15 friendly players that we have, and, you know, part of it, he may have XP, VM. you guys have heard me talk about this, certainly as a Unicom, I've noticed uh, there'll be times when Artie will just sticky fire me the entire battle, even if it's not the right tactical thing to do, and, you know, and obviously, I'm making sure that whenever I'm spotted, I'm moving around laterally, etc. And you may be wondering why I didn't move into the ditch. And check this out. I get two shots into that T-3485, and his one shot toward me missed. Why? Well, because I had him spotted because I'm sitting behind bushes, and he's not looking at me. He doesn't know exactly where I am, which means that I'm going to have the first shot advantage. I'm already fully aimed in. And even after he turns his turret to aim at me, you know, that means that he's going to subject his gun to bloom, to dispersion, whereas I'm already pre-aiming at the right spot. Now, the best way to approach once you've won the initial brawling area on that southeast peninsula is usually to come along on the inside of, from the south spawn, the inside of the lake. And so this would allow me to spot their snipers who might be sitting down over on the D7, D8 area. There's like a building and some uh, really good bush lines or to also spot their snipers that might be on the C6 area. In this case, their team is not in either location, but if they are, I can always drop down into the riverbed. And you can see like our challenger is taking a really good approach line. He's staying low in the riverbed. Now he's coming up top to see who can shoot on. Now, obviously, this is a bit of a route. We've got map control. We've got a lead in terms of tanks. I've still got most of my hit points. And so I know, for example, after firing, I'm most likely lit, and I had spotted that challenger but you know i can see where his turret's aiming he's aiming to my left so even if he turned his turret toward me it was most likely going to be that i was going to get two shots onto him with him getting at most one shot or none right and so i've switched over to the glorious he round get a nice 159 damage roll he snapshots me and damages me so i can't play that peaking game again but someone else kills him uh, but th that is worth noting on this particular tank is that it's both tall and then the in terms of the profile and then its turret its head is actually very fat and wide and so you know I'm, I was taking a risk there with that challenger he was able to snapshot me because I do present a bit of a large target and I was thankfully that shot, <laughs> shot didn't take out the friendly Cromwell that would have been kind of sad but the nice thing about having any gun that has a high rate of fire is it's really good for knocking down destructible cover. So I knock down part of the building that's allowing me and the P-43 to fire on him. And then, you know, I'm able to get a, a damaging shot into him. That already, that's either the third or fourth shot he's fired on me. So it is with great glee that I return the favor on him. You know, obviously, he didn't damage me with any of his shots. And part of that is, you know, my part, I'm just making sure as soon as I fire, I get moving. Or if I'm kind of pinned into an area, at least to wiggle back and forth laterally to the Artie uh, to make his job difficult. A lot of people play these boot vehicles, they take advantage, they leverage the speed, they misuse it, right? They don't have a plan. Everything that you've seen me do throughout these two battles is very, very intentional. Partly, I need to be careful. You know, it's obviously, these are tier 8 battles, there are some very punishing guns that are out there, so I'm going to play this smart, gradually, you know, work my way up the battlefield, and careful not to get too far ahead of my friendlies, and to put myself in a position where I can get picked off. So this tank, you know, solo queued, performed very well, 66% win rate over, you know, 1k damage. 
and it's reflective of the tank's good mechanics. You know, obviously the view range of you know, 300 is super limited, but the tank has good enough camo and good enough mobility to still function as a scout. I hope you enjoyed the video, and more Frenchies are on the way. Take care.